Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at this. Uh, this, as you can see, is a Perspex riot shield and it's an example used by the British Army in Northern Ireland from the early 1970s right the way through into the 1980s, possibly a little bit beyond that, but certainly I believe in the 90s these were replaced with something a little bit more refined, possibly before that time. But this is a particularly simple design. It's essentially just a piece of Perspex with a couple of handles attached on the back a piece of foam rubber to protect the arm should the shield be impacted by something. This is the shorter of the two variants that we used. This measures exactly one meter in height and 60 centimeters across. The larger version, the, the taller version, was again I believe 60 centimeters across but two meters in height. Uh, if my understanding of that is correct. If anyone can correct me on that I'd be very willing to uh, uh, very willing to, to see that in the comments because I've, I've not been able to measure one of the, the larger shields to get that but uh, from what I can uh, estimate from photographs it's double in double in height so the obviously the idea of the, the taller shield is the bottom can be rested on the ground and it gives much a higher uh, wall of protection uh, this is however small enough that it still allows a soldier to be maneuverable so you can use one of these in more mobile anti-riot operations, snatch squads could carry these and so forth. So the idea of this, it's, it's sort of a one of the first bits of updated anti-riot equipment introduced for use in Operation Banner. The British Army did have previous designs of riot shield, one example being a mesh shield which can be seen here in use in Cyprus. And there's some example of finer mesh shields being used in the early days of Operation Banner as well as you can see here. However, the most common type of shield in use prior to the introduction of the Perspex shield was a steel shield, roughly three quarters of which was a solid steel sheet, with a quarter of the height of the shield at the top being made out of mesh, which allowed the soldier using it a view even when the shield was held up to protect the upper body. And there is a transitional period when these were still in use alongside the Perspex shields. And the Perspex shields, of course, have a great advantage in that they're both lighter in weight and they are fully transparent. When compared to the mesh, which partially obscures the vision of the soldier, and the solid shield, which was even worse, so they obviously did have the mesh section at the top. The Perspex is a much better material from that point of view. You can see at the back here how the shield is held. There's one handle which just hooks over the arm there, and then there's a grip here for the other hand. So it's designed to be held in the left hand, as you can see, and then with the foam rubber section here, obviously means that if it is impacted by something at the front, it doesn't drive directly into your arm and uh, cause you an injury there, there is some padding. So we'll have a look at this now, we'll, we'll lay it out on the ground, just have a look at the construction in a little bit more detail, look at the design of the two handles. And as I say, it won't be a particularly long video this because it's not a complex bit of kit, but nevertheless interesting. Uh, and hopefully it will be interesting having a look at it in, in close detail. So have a look at the details of the construction now. So looking at the front of the shield here, you can see how the handles are attached using little slot head screws on there and the foam rubber is just glued in place. When this arrived with me, it was coming loose, so I used contact adhesive to reattach it and that's worked very well. Uh, and as I say, this is the original foam that came with it, quite dog -eared. You can see a missing chunk out of the corner there. When we look at the back, you'll see that it's uh, quite heavily worn and chunks taken out of it, which is unsurprising. Looking at the back of the shield here, you can see the, the two handles. We have the one that hooks over the, the arm here and then the grip. Very, very simple construction. These are both made out of pieces of steel pipe, which are then flattened off a uh, section here and at each end on the, the grip so that they can be screwed in place onto the shield. And then they're just covered with a rubber hose to make the rubber grip. You can see the, the cloth reinforcement in the hose there that's been used. And obviously they're just painted with red lead or something similar just to uh, prevent them from rusting. So very, very simple construction, but very functional in that regard. So there we are. Hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, quite a ubiquitous bit of kit, certainly very emblematic of, of Operation Banner and extensively used over in Northern Ireland. As I say, as far as I'm aware, used into the 1980s at least. So I'd be interested to know if any, uh, there was certainly a later example of the, the riot shields, which were a little bit more refined in terms of design. I'm not quite sure when they were introduced, but they're certainly in use in photographs in the 1990s. So it changed around somewhere around that time period. Anyway, that's been a look at this in a, a little bit of detail, just to give you some ideas of the construction and so forth. I say I gave the measurements earlier in the video. If you wanted to make a reproduction of one of these for display, 
wouldn't be that difficult and obviously hopefully the dimensions will help with that the only thing you need to make sure you do is round off the corners but if you can find a piece of perspex in the right size the handles wouldn't be too difficult to make and uh, you could make one of these should you wish to for display unfortunately originals are not particularly easy to come by so as i always say i do hope you found this interesting if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there's, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.